Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to be reducing the size of the file uh, once we publish it and then doing something else with the image. So <clears throat> for this we want to go into our edit block. Uh, uh, we basically want to go into our CS project file. So right click on your project and uh, click on edit block.cs project. Now we'll take this part if you have it, otherwise. I'll delete it and uh, we'll type it in from the start. So you want to create an item group and then here you want to create a tag with content. Don't need that and uh, yeah just make it self-contained. All right so update and in here we want to put the path of whatever we're working with. So in our case, it's going to be www root slash content slash blog. Because the database on our machine and the database on the on the server is going to be different, we want to be we want to exclude all files, right? So file with any name and with any extension. Exclude all of those. And uh, the command was copy to publish directory and say never. Let's copy this a few times. And now we take care of that. And next thing we want to do is for our library. So let's suppress, uh, replace content with lib. And let's say take any library and what we want is just the dist folder because that's sort of the final um, what the rest of the whole uh, library sort of built into this dist is it's basically the only thing we want so you can see that the dist folder has some you know like subfolders etc we want to be able to include those so uh, go ahead, include them like so, and copy to publish uh, directory always. And here we want to basically say, right, lib everything. So we sort of, if you follow the Boolean logic, we exclude all libraries, but we include only the dist folder in all of the libraries. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead, open up our folder in File Explorer, go to bin release .net core, and actually just delete the .net core release. Uh, then .net publish C configuration release in your, um, what's called in your command prompt. And let's publish this again. Okay, and let's see if we get get what we want. All right, so we only get the static image. Cool. I didn't even bother copying the blog. And let's see what we get in the lib. So we still get this one, uh, the name of the library, but we only have the dist folder and all the files that, that we need in there. Okay, so. That's that. Next thing, what we wanted to take care of is if you look, we sort of, we accumulate a lot of images here, right? So let's go to our file manager and let's say bull remove image string image. Right. So F12 on this, so control F12, so we can go here, implement an implemented method. All right, so how do we write this? So we have the safe path, where is it? This right here, right? So we get the file name from the image, right here. And we can sort of do the same. So 
The same way we do is check if the directory exists, we want to check if the file exists. So our file and the save path. Really, we just want the image path. And instead of the file name, we want image. So rush try catch, and uh, we want to return false exception e, and we'll just write to console the message. It's not going to put it anywhere, but just so we don't get the warning here. Okay, so. Let's check if the file exists. And yeah, delete. So not remove its file delete, and all we do is we pass the Whoa. yeah, so. If it exists, uh, delete the file and return true. Otherwise, if something happens, return false. All right. So how do we want to incorporate this? So if we go into our controller panel and right here, where if, if we are overriding an image, right? So let's put it here. Let's do this. If, so if, we only want to delete the image if we already have a current image. So if we check for a current image, if we say string is null or empty, if it's not null or empty, we want a file manager, uh, remove image, and we want to what we want to remove is the current image. Okay. All right. So let's just go in here and oh, I'm just no, never mind. Let's just not let's not delete anything. Let's just make sure it what's it called? It runs and it works. So here it is. Um, Let's see what it's complaining about. All right, so from the last tutorial, I uh, forgot to disconnect it from the live database. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. OK. So where I have this image here, I'm going to try to add it, edit it. And um, so it was blocking.net core, right? Choose a file and let's grab this one. Let's submit it. Oh, go to home. All right, so the image change changed. Let's see if it got deleted. So it did. Great. So now our file system sort of cleans up itself. Let's delete all of these so we can actually see it happening. So admin panel. Probably going to be an error, or might be an error because you know. I don't know. Actually, everything's fine. Cool. So we have our trip to China, and uh, let's change. What's it called? Let's change the image again. And let's see if anything accumulated. Nope. It didn't. So now the system sort of cl cleans up itself every time you upload a new file. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to down, uh, uh, scale the image down a little bit because at the moment the images are quite large when we post them and we don't need the images that big. So the way you do this is let's go into Nugget Packages, Manage Nugget Packages, Browse and look for Magic magic scale 
Oh my god. Magic Scaler. And get the photosauce.magic scaler. Go ahead and install that. Okay, so after that installs, go into your file manager and uh, let's create private. Um, first, because I can't remember the name of the method we want to using photosauce.magic scaler. Settings, process image settings, private. Process image settings, image options, new process image settings. Cool. So, what we want to specify here? We want to specify the width to be around 800. I think that's all right. I, mm, 500. Yeah, I think that's good. So we want to specify a resize mode, a crop scale mode, the crop. Another thing we want to specify is JPEG quality. We're going to be using, basically just put a hundred here. Uh, so we want top quality. No, another JPEG. We want to specify subsample to 420, and we want to actually uh, let's specify here save format file format JPEG. Okay, all right, so we got our options, let's make sure we uh, use them here. So, uh Wanna go magic image processor dot process image. And let's see what we need to supply. So we need an uh, we need a stream, we need an output stream, and we need the settings. Okay. Simple enough. So our input stream can be image. Open read stream, cool. And our um, what's it called? Uh, our output output stream. If we put it here, can be file stream. Nice. And in here we can specify image options. Sweet. So, is there an? I don't remember. Was there an async method? Um, nope. Good. We'll just have to live without async method. So let's see what we get now. Put this there. Uh, yeah, I think I think this should run. All right. Let's refresh this. Let's try to give it the same image. Okay. Let's see the size of the image here. Cool. So if you look right over here, it will say the, the size of the image is actually 800 by 500 pixels. So we successfully converted the image. And if we go to the network tab, we refresh. You will see that this image is only 333 kilobytes. Don't pay attention. This is already, but this big one, is basically like two megabytes so this is gonna if you have a lot of images on your blog this is gonna significantly speed up your uh, like your page load time you can see this literally loads in seconds when if we go back the ma main image might sometimes like take a, a second or two to load so yeah now uh, let's go ahead and try to publish uh, the internet using uh, uh, web web publish. Go into your uh, control panel. I'll show you how to set this up uh, in the previous episode. If you do, if you didn't follow it, go ahead and watch this episode. But other than that, you can proceed. Oh, sorry about that. You need to go to show deploy information and turn it on. 
and from here on uh, what you want to do is sometimes this will fail so if you enable this go ahead into here and click publish and make a new profile and select IS, FTP, etc. again and uh, web deploy and go ahead slowly copy over your information so server name site name um, username password C validate connection host name could not be parsed what is it on about all right so after you enable it just give it a quick refresh and and what's it called open it up again it, sh it should uh, what's it called uh, uh, it should give you this <laughs> new link so yeah let's validate it so at this point it's valid let's settings do we need anything nope save it and publish And voila, it's done. Now, this is a much quicker way than the one I showed you in the last video, but in case this fails, you have a backup plan. So let's go ahead and onto our website and see if anything changed. Okay, so you see this image here, and it's a big image, so I'm gonna re-upload it. Or there it is. Submit it. Cool. Now let's take a look at it. It's 800 by 500. Cool. And it still looks the same, but right now it is only 299 kilobytes, when before it was probably around 2 or 4 megabytes. So this will be it for this episode. And in the next episode, I'm going to go over uh, caching, right? So right now, if you look this image, the static image, if we go to network and we refresh, right? The static image, this one here, loads from cache. And you can see it here, size load from, from memory cache. And this one here isn't loaded from cache. It keeps loading it from the server. So that can take upload time for like people who re revisit your website so in the next episode we're gonna talk about how to sort of cache your responses and basically speed up your uh, uh, speed up your load time on the web page but anyway guys if you have any comments please leave them in the comment section i'll be happy to answer them all if you like subscribe you share whatever uh, and yeah as always see you in the next episode